Now we're going to learn about the future of events like this um, and I talk about data backpacks, backpacks, metaverse fun beyond wallets. And I would like to invite to the stage Evan McMillan, the founder of Disco XYZ. When she's Hi, Evan. When she's not being a founder, she's actually doing furniture upholstery. So now you've got two things to approach her about, you know, after she's speaking. Like, for, first, it's a beautiful project, and secondly, you might have some furniture to, you know, give her to. I don't know, do you take commissions? We'll see. But we are all multifaceted human beings, and I'm very excited to learn all about all of your weird fun facts, too. So thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. GM, GM, everybody. Are we ready to have some fun? Woo! All right, that is the energy we're looking for. Um, now, are my, okay, cool, we're on screen, we are live. Uh, my name is Evan McMullen. I am the CEO of Disco, your identity for the metaverse. We believe that you are the shining center of the party and you should be able to reflect your data and your identity to the world however you choose. At Disco, we care very deeply about the future of fun and want to make sure that we can all have the right tools to turn Web3 from a bankless nation into the crypto utopia we know it can be. Financial freedom is super cool. In fact, it's the most fundamental of our freedoms because without it, we cannot exercise many other rights as human beings. But we need more than just financial freedom to have fun. We need the freedom to be ourselves. First up, I'm going to cover a little history lesson that can guide the way we think about having a good time in the blockchain ecosystem. The concept of fun first appeared in the English language in the late 1600s. The French were already pretty good at having fun because they invented stuff like jousting and lace fabric. But prior to the Norman conquest of the 11th century, the concept of fun didn't even have a word in the British Isles, let alone a bunch of cool inventions dedicated specifically to enjoying oneself. William Chaucer was the first author to write about fun in the English language. Many English writers of the 14th century were consumed with more serious concepts like religion and mythology, romance. Anyway, so the rest of our writers were very consumed with concepts like romance, mythology, and religion, which were Latin ideas that made their way to England in the saddlebags of the invading Norman French. However, Chaucer turned instead um, to a truly Anglo-French concept of uh, combining fun and fart jokes. His book, The Canterbury Tales, revolutionized the way that fun was seen in England. It was no longer considered a stuffy diversion of the upper class, but instead was accessible to the average serf. Chaucer is still revered today as the father of modern English fun and as the inspiration for the whoopee cushion. A few hundred years later, in 1857, the British were still leading the way in defining modern fun. Pub owners Charles and Logan McGrath originally began experimenting with a mirrored ball with a light hung from the ceiling so that their pub could be more fun than everyone else's. Standing around drinking in the dark isn't that cool, even when you're standing next to very expensive JPEGs, and doing the same with the lights on was also pretty lame. But this happy medium of illumination and visual delight allowed for a much more theatrical space. Across the pond, after another 60 years of evolution and homebrewed designs, Louis Bernard Wost of Newport, Kentucky, in the United States, filed a patent for the Myriad Reflector. He had meticulously evolved the original approach into a robust design for large-scale manufacture. Unlike the mirrored spheres that we usually imagine when we say disco ball, this reflector was a 27-inch globe made with more than 1,200 handmade mirrors, glimmering and illuminated with the light from within. One small sphere, and suddenly, you had a party. The Myriad Reflector was cool, but its motor and light made it pretty finicky. And so around the same time, a similar object called a mirror ball gained popularity. These spheres were covered in square mirror pieces illuminated by lights shining on them from the outside. So they got incorporated in all kinds of unexpected places, like a tuberculosis hospital, as pictured here. Today, we know disco balls as the instant mark of a dance floor, a signal that fun is afoot. I'm sure that some of you were dancing last night at the beach clubs underneath the disco ball, so please hydrate after this session. Disco balls are the shining center of the party, and when one shows up, you know you have the ingredients for a good time, and that's how Web3 should be. 
Just like a disco ball, you as a person are a marvelous, glittering party all your own, and you should be received in the metaverse accordingly. Apps and protocols should morph around you to fit your personal preferences. However, today in Web2, your data is consumed by apps uh, and strewn across the universe out of your ownership and control. Like the original Myriad Reflector, your light, your identity, your unique amazingness comes from within you and should be reflected with your consent in the way you prefer, not you know, letting Mark Zuckerberg sell you on the open market to radicalize uh, QAnon recruits or whatever Facebook's business model is these days. The magical part of Web3 is that we can reclaim our identities, enabled with true ownership by our public blockchain key pairs. We can logically centralize control of data around ourselves while physically decentralizing where that data lives throughout the metaverse so that we can become the self-sovereign disco balls that we were always meant to be. Public chains are not appropriate places to store personally identifiable information, the crucial data that makes you, you because the risk and harm to human beings can be extremely dangerous, and publicizing data so that everyone can see in God mode means an equal opportunity surveillance apparatus, not a step away from surveillance capitalism. Blockchains are perfect for public, immutable, transferable assets where we might have a double spend problem, but all the non-financial information about you that doesn't require global publicity in perpetuity uh, and you know probably would be better enjoyed with greater flexibility speed and interoperability um, we can take all that data off the chain and bring it with us in our backpacks but evan you might ask how can we have a personality in the metaverse if we can't express it all on chain and if it's not on chain is there a way for us to use our keys and still have true ownership so in Web3 today, when you connect your wallet to a decentralized application, your wallet contents enable a fairly personalized experience. Whether bringing your NFTs into a game environment, spending tokens in DeFi, your wallet contents right now are the bulk of your Web3 personality, which means that in Web3 today, you introduce yourself with your money and transaction history, not your knowledge, experiences, sense of humor, community, or personhood, but you are more than the contents of your wallet. If the only thing I know about you is your Ethereum address, then we can't have very much fun together. We can pool capital and spend it, but we can't easily coordinate a newsletter, find new friends, or bootstrap an interplanetary messaging layer so we can check on Elon Musk on Mars. We need to know more about one another without compromising our independence to bring real fun to the metaverse. Because we are multidimensional, vibrant human beings with personalities and likes and dislikes, accomplishments, capabilities, secrets, and dreams, we are not merely apes on a small rotating rock who exist to leak alpha and sell JPEGs. We are all that and much more. Um, so if we're going to be more than the contents of our wallet, as Tyler Durden so earnestly urged us in the movie Fight Club, we're going to need another way to introduce ourselves. Some of you have heard of the world of Web3 that lies beyond the blockchain. Like Back to the Future, it's going to take a little bit of technology for us to get there, but instead of a time-traveling car, we can use our existing private keys to sign private data written about a user that can be owned and controlled by that person, not publicized for the world to see on chain. This data can be written by Ethereum keys, about a Bitcoin key, and everyone can be on the same page across chains Web 2 and Web 3. More than 100 kinds of keys, from Web2 identifiers to Web3 blockchain keys, can be used in this way to write and read each other's messages in a fast, low-cost, secure manner. These credentials can be controlled and signed with our existing blockchain keys, but do not live on the public chain. Rather, they live wherever the owner wishes to store them, in private decentralized storage, on their device, or even printed out as QR codes. We are organic, evolving beings, and accordingly, our data needs similar flexibility, not immutability, to help us have fun together and evolve as individuals, constantly changing to solve more complex coordination problems than simply throwing money around. Verifiable credentials help us express ourselves with rich data in accordance with our consent as God and Madonna and the W3C intended. So if you're gonna carry all of these awesome non-financial things with you around, you're gonna need more than just a wallet. This is time for your personal data backpack, a way to carry all your stuff across the metaverse, across chains from web two to web three, full of your ID cards, your memberships, memories, accomplishments, and more. Your collection of verifiable credentials um, can be a much fuller expression of your than your financial accounts ever could. 
just like your backpack IRL, you should be able to decide who sees what's in your data backpack and who's allowed to interact with it and how. At Disco, when we say data backpack, we mean a set of your verifiable credentials, data encrypted against your keys, stored in decentralized storage under your ownership and control. This setup is possible because of another amazing tech spec from the World Wide Web Consortium, the high wizards of the internet, and the world's leading experts in connecting networks together. Decentralized identifiers or, uh, identifiers, or DIDs, are like aliases for your existing public addresses, email, Ethereum, Solana, Bitcoin, like a hundred other kinds. DIDs allow us to retrofit our existing addresses with new technical features so we can help all of these different kinds of key pairs communicate with one another through the shared language of verifiable credentials. We can rotate these keys if they're compromised or pertain to a specific role that we no longer occupy. Disco's data backpacks are a simple, friendly interface to manage all your stuff without protocol complexity or confusing technical labor. So just like a backpack can carry other things that you plan to give to others, DIDs enable superpowers like a portable Web3 DocuSign where you can verifiably sign any data about you or others on or off chain anywhere you go. You can have as many DIDs as you like from as many chains and each address can collect VCs that go in your backpack. In the future, you'll be able to show up to any one of your, with any one of your Ethereum addresses and enjoy the reputation you've built up around all of your other addresses, whether uh, from Web2, Web3, or any base chain. So we at Disco are especially excited to be building with amazing ecosystems like, uh, like SheePie, Boys Club, Ceramic, and more, and can't wait to help you all get your bags soon. So at Disco, you know, when we, uh, when we think about this future that we are building, like Chaucer in the Canterbury Tales, we need to revolutionize the way that fun is seen in our community. Web3 should no longer be considered a stuffy diversion of the upper class. Instead, we must make it finally accessible to the average person and to all the other people who aren't here in the room with us today, which means we must to co commit to low or no cost onboarding into a world of data that can more effectively capture the human experience. We need data that can move seamlessly between chains without bridges and gas fees. We can avoid platform lock-in and manage risk by making our data interoperable and supporting a plurality of providers and ecosystems instead of binding ourselves to a singular chain. We can maximize consent by sharing our data on a only need-to-know basis, and we can build Web3 experiences with DIDs and VCs that enable this future vision. In the future, Bella Hadid can present a credential from Vogue to prove that she's been on the cover 12 times, which a bot cannot do. So this proof from Vogue can be like an anti-Sybil proxy, so she doesn't need to fill out a CAPTCHA when she, sh when she shops for clothes online. Oops. Taylor Swift can carry a self-attested credential stating her dislike of John Mayer. So in uh, all of her future restaurant decisions, she can uh, book you know, her, her uh, dinner plans in the future, and these restaurants can omit his music from the playlist. Boysclub.vip, the global community of women and non-binary people in Web3, can issue credentials of membership in good standing, which can be used to access exclusive merch with partner brands um, and you know, allow uh, members to enter members-only experiences in person, skip the waitlist for future opportunities or allow lists. Side note, for all of our female and non-binary friends here today, I invite you to join us at boysclub.vip and tell them I sent you. Your identity and your reputation are the keys to a metaverse driven by our accomplishments and our interactions, not only by our purchases and our monetary earnings. But where we are today, we have a few paths in front of us, and while they are long, these decisions need to be made urgently. The Web3 community is starting to agree, from Ethereum to Bitcoin to even Cardano, that account abstraction is critical. Many builders from these ecosystems understand that adding privacy later is not a viable solution and building tools without ethical guardrails that dox early adopters can be catastrophic. This means we have common ground ahead despite the tribalism of Web3 if multiple chain ecosystems are all excited at the same time about the same capabilities for their own communities. We might just have a winner on our hands for a rich interoperability layer through these technologies. And if you don't religiously follow Tim Berners-Lee or the W3C, you might have missed a momentous historic event last week. 
DIDS were basically approved to move forward as a standard, and Mr. Berners-Lee himself, daddy of the internet, struck down Google's opposition and defended the internet yet again against the forces that wish to, cent that wish to centralize it. So thank you all so much for joining me here today. If you are excited about the future of fun, please share your metaverse dreams with us at disco.xyz. I can't wait to hear about all of your wildest imaginations for building a world that connects the human part of human coordination tools. I'm Evan McMullen, and I will see you in the metaverse.